Okay. Good, good, good day, everyone. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for joining the um, Vibrant Kenya and Building in Kenya's first webinar um, as part of our series. Thank you very much for being here. Like my, oh, my camera wasn't open. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here as we talk about the real estate sector and it is changing. The real estate sector is changing. So we want to just um, you know, take a moment and just acknowledge that this is in partnership with, um, this is building in Kenya in partnership with Buy Rent Kenya, um, the leading um, real estate portal here in Kenya and then building in Kenya, the first real estate developers toolkit. And this is part of our series when we talk about the real estate sector is changing. Are you changing? Are you ready for that change? Okay, are you changing and are you ready for that change? And so we are happy to have here our illustrious panel that we can talk about. Um, the first part about it, we thought about, you know, if we are, what is what does business look like newly in this era of COVID and in the era of a, pan, a pandemic? Are you ready to move your real estate business to online and for it to be virtual? So that's a critical part here that we are finding ourselves in. How do we retool ourselves? How do we retool our businesses? How do we upskill ourselves? How do we transform the way that we've been doing business inside of the new modes and the new methods that business is going to be conducted? So we um, we we invite you to um, not just have this um, webinar be like you're participating in a or watching a TV show. That you know, I know all of us have been in so many Zoom calls, and we might be at this point zoomed out. This is not a Zoom call. We're happy to be using this new technology of web, Webinar Jam, but you may be tuned out in terms of I've, I've attended so many of these. So we're asking you to have this webinar be something that is valuable, something that is critical for you and your business, and that you walk away from here with a new um, spring in your step, a new um, excitement about what's, what's ahead of us, inside of um, our sector, inside of you and your profession, and you as a professional, and what's the future, and, and what, what all do we need to do? So let me see here. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I have a, someone is, okay. All right, great. Okay, so let's see here. We are about to go ahead and get started. So I want to introduce our, our panelists. We have an illustrious panel panel here, as I mentioned. We have a panel um, that is here to talk to us about their different perspectives about this moving our business online and moving you know, your real estate professional services to, um, to a place of, of a new way of doing business. Actually, it's not a new way of doing business. Let me, let me correct that. This, new, this incorporation, incorporation of technology and the innovations that are available out there in the real estate sector has been in discussion and has been utilized by um, you know, several markets around the world. This is really thrusting and throwing the Kenyan professionals and the Kenyan market into these waters. And so we, you know, we're excited that we can now jump in here with a sense of purpose and a, a sense of now is the time. So let me turn on this um, presentation here and so that you can see who we have with us. All righty. Okay, so let me go ahead and start introducing our panel. Can see that the internet is starting to come in. Okay, so our panel here we have with us today. I don't. Um, so first with us we have um, Stephen Omingo. Stephen Omingo, if you would please show yourself, reveal yourself with your camera. Take a moment to do that. 
Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now, my name is Steven Omengo. Uh, I'm a director at Tyson's Limited. Uh, professionally, I'm a registered estate agent. I'm also a registered valuer. Welcome to the meeting. Thank okay, you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Stephen. And then um, we have Lizzie, who is the CEO of um, Byrant Kenya. Lizzie, if you would just say hello and and um, and introduce yourself a little bit. Yes, thank you, Robin. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm the CEO for Buy Rent Kenya, uh, the leading property platform in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and very excited to host our first uh, webinar and looking forward to introducing more of the series to you and reaching out. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. And then um, Jevin, Jevin Otieno, who is the founder of PropTech here in Kenya. Jevin, would you... Yes, and say hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Welcome, everyone. I am uh, Jevan Ocheno, founder of PopTech Kenya, the first ever PopTech community in Kenya. So what, what is PopTech? PropTech is basically property technology. So our main aim is just to create the ecosystem where innovation in terms of tech, uh, technology can thrive in the real estate sector. But professionally, uh, I'm, a pop I'm a property valuer. Yeah. Okay, great. So we have wonderful. So we have um, you and Stephen are both property valuers. That's that's great. Thank you very much. And as we know, Lizzie is as is here with us um, as the leader of of building in. I'm sorry, by rent Kenya. So let's let's jump right in. So attendees, thank you again so much for being with us. We want to take a pulse. We want to check in um, with the attendees that are here with us. And we want to give you an opportunity to chime in. Wonderful. Thank you very much for being with you, all of us. Glad to have you here. I can see you've already started adding some chats. It's great to have you all here with us. Um, we want to give you a chance to chime in and jump straight in. This is, we are not, um, we're not on this webinar if you will, to um, sit and be the edicts and roll out edicts. We want this to be a collaborative discussion, if you will, that we can learn together. We can hear what some of the challenges are, what the opportunities are. But one of the things I hope you take away from this, um, all of us, is that um, maybe two things. Never waste a crisis. Never waste a good crisis. That's one thing. And then the other one is, is that where is the real challenge in the adjustment? So maybe by the end of this, you'll kind of maybe do some soul searching. Where is the real, <laughs> Jevin's already shaking his head. He knows where that may be going. Where is the real challenge here to this adjustment? You may have thought it's out there. Oh, it's those things and this, that, and the other. Those people are holding me back, that, 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 that. Hopefully by the end of this call, you really can start to see where that um, holding back might be and where it might lie and where there is to be making those adjustments. So let's first get up the first poll. So the first poll, I'm, um, I'm trusting that you can see this poll that we have up here. I think it may be at the bottom, um, at the bottom of your screen. If you can look for it, we have a, a poll question we're asking you. How confident are you in adapting technology in your real estate business? How confident are you in, in, in adapting this? So if you can look where that poll is there down at the bottom and, and chime in and let us know. I have some concerns. I have concerns about doing that, making those adoptions. Or, hey, I'm very confident I'm in it and I'm looking for more ways to, to do this. If you could take a moment and, and add in at the bottom your, your comments. Let's see, are they? Anyone's having trouble with that chat? I mean, with that entering that poll, just let us let us know in the chat if anyone's having trouble with that. Thank you. 
Sorry about that interruption. This is this is the challenges with technology, isn't it? In real time. Okay, so panel panelists. So I'm going to invite you to I'm, I'm going to invite you to also respond to that question in real time. What what have been your observations about peoples um, in the sectors ease of ease of adjustment to can i can you hear me uh yeah. yes we can okay, wonderful yeah, can. what has been your what has been your observation of our the sector or people in those sectors ease of adapting and, and, and incorporating technology um let me start with lizzie because she's She's also seeing it from the front hand. Lizzie, maybe you can, you can just give us a comment yeah. on that. Sure, thanks Robin. Um, so today we've witnessed how technology has changed and is changing uh, the way most businesses transacted, as you said earlier. And no doubt the, the real estate uh, uh, sector has benefited from the improved efficiencies. If you remember the days prior to online uh, listings and virtual tours and e-signing, you understand just how much things have changed. Um, you also understand uh, the move towards mobile has really emphasized and the shift from efficiency to another dimension altogether. So not only are paperless transactions the norm, but more mobile centric technology transforming the whole landscape. Uh, and this, Byron Kenya in a particular way has pivoted to being mobile first and mobile centric first. Um, access to information, uh, customer expectations, client experience and service is very different to the way it was five years ago. And there's so many more changes to come. Um, you've also seen recently that the Ministry of Lands is finding itself under pressure to scale up new transactions, you know, uh, and customers know the consequences of unavoidable external uh, influences uh, being shut off. Uh, so therefore, they fast track the necessary enabling of this legislation. So all professionals in planning, serving, uh, surveying, uh, conveyancing are feeling the pressure to tweak their business models too. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Stephen, let me, let me ask you also, um, you, you're, you know, head of agency, you're running a real estate firm. Tyson is um, a very, you know, um, grounded and has a long presence here in the market what are you finding just this is just for the you know your initial um comments what are you finding is the biggest challenge that that agents if you will are finding to adjusting to a, a cloud-based business perhaps or the in the um the injection of the technology innovation for them being successful in your businesses. What are you, what are you finding are the challenges? Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Robin. Maybe just to give a, a clear picture, uh, real estate is one of the industries that you can't operate in without uh, the issue of uh, understanding uh, technology. Technology basically is the driver when it comes to real estate, because real estate is just about communication, getting information from one point to the other, you're connecting uh, people here and there. So without a, a, a proper way of communicating, it becomes uh, quite, quite difficult. So just to, uh, to tell you uh, the members this, is that um, 
already technology has been adopted in real estate. The only difference is to what extent. Yeah. We're already applying the basic mm. uh, tools, uh, you know, the basic software, the basic um, office suits. We're already operating on emails. Now there is WhatsApp and, mm. and so on. So the fact is that you cannot run away from technology because what happens is that um, most of the clients, they actually want real-time communication. Mm. It is no longer luxury to wait and read your emails in the office. You have to mm. respond to those ones right away. So the, 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 the main challenge um, when it comes to the adoption of technology are just the cost uh, limitations. Because you realize that some of these softwares, uh, some of them are expensive, some of them are free, yeah, and some of them are, are moderately um, you know, uh, expensive. So the fact that you cannot access this because of cost, then it becomes an issue. But then the other element yeah, is that um, technology also requires you to invest in knowledge. So there is also the lack of knowledge um, amongst uh, particularly um, quite a number of real estate uh, agents. Yeah. And that is basically a, hinder, uh, a handicap when it comes to the adoption of technology. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you. Um, Devin or, or, or Stanley, um, you know, inside of, so what we've, what we've been talking about here is we've been talking about um, technology and innovation in the real estate sector, but this really does have a, a, a name for all of this. Just like FinTech, the financial sector, um, EdTech, um, health tech, there actually is a whole cadre of technology that is some completely being built around and um, tooled for the utilization in the built environment in the real estate sector. Then maybe you can tell us a little bit of, about some of the tools that you see that people are um, consistently using in this market and maybe some tools that people have not taken up um, fully um, that could be to our advantage. And perhaps maybe why is that? Uh, thank you. So we all know what PropTech is. PropTech is property technology. But then we're seeing that our market hasn't really, really, really shifted to that position where where we, we are dependent to we are dependent in, in technology to to carry out our, our our activities. But the thing is we get that, me personally, I feel like the data infrastructure hasn't still been, been yet uh, been put. So so I think you'll find that there are different companies who are rolling out products that are that are tech-based, but then you, you look at it as it's not really putting out the, it's not really coming out clearly where the, the maximum, uh, maximum pro, uh, productivity is actually achieved because there, is, there isn't much uh, data infrastructure. So what I've seen being used uh, mostly in, in, in our market, uh, one, one I, can point, I can point out from my rent Canada, the listing portals in which has been clearly adopted, but then there is more into just listing properties. This aspect of virtual tours, there's aspects of AI in which it hasn't been fully incorporated because you get the market hasn't fully advanced or matured in, 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 in a structured point of view where you can actually adopt this, this, uh, this new new advanced technology. And, th and that's where our market should be looking into, incorporating artificial intelligence, IoT products, that is Internet of Things, where you can, we can automate our building system so that we can, we can actually be able to function uh, in, a, in a much efficient manner. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, you know, uh, let's see here. I used to own a real estate firm in two different ways as an international franchise and my own also. And both of them, it was my, my inspiration of driving us to doing business in new ways. And, you know, just like, just like Stanley mentioned, how are we doing virtual tours? 
how are we, and in a few moments, I'm gonna invite um, Lizzie to talk to us about um, how are we managing our client base and our data, um, our, our, our customer interactions with people such that I don't have to, I don't have to remember when I need to send an email to a client. I don't have to remember when I need to do a follow-up or get them the information they requested. With technology and automation, there is a way to set a lot of this stuff up that you can begin to function on the things that sell the business, right? There's the things to do that sell the business, and then there's things to do to grow the business. And I think some of us as in the real estate business, we, we need to be two-minded, if you will. Um, one of the great books called E-Myth um, that I love, E-Myth, they help to separate the difference about our business and as, as business people. And if you're a real estate agent or a developer, you are a business entity, if you will. And so what you have to be two-minded about is one, there is the operations of the business, and then there is the business itself. What's my product? What's my service? And both of those need to have a, an integrated way of operating with each other. But where do you put your time on each of them, and how do you have how do you be more efficient at both? So, Lizzie, maybe I can invite you to come in. What what, what do you see in terms? Oh, well, before you do that, Lizzie, if I can invite, invite people, I just want to share a little bit about what the response has been on that first poll. Um, so we have been hovering around. Um, Thirty percent of people here, of almost ninety people, say they have great con they have concerns about adopting technology. Okay, so and then um, about seventy percent say they're confident. So then that you know that that's the reality out there in our sector. And so maybe we can, Lizzie, as you come in and you talk about, I know you had you have these tools that are available to people. What can what can what does um, Byron Kenya do to ease people's concerns with the adaption of technology? And then to everybody, once again, I'm going to open up the next poll, and you can start to chime in. Is um, what would you like more guidance on? So the poll is open, and so Lizzie, you can just speak to my question. But I'm telling people that's the sure. next question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right, so at Byron Kenya, we have two um, technology tools that we use. Uh, the first being um, an inbuilt uh, CRM system, or what we call a customer relation management system, that allows agents already to, you know, be able to manage their listings, manage their needs, um, and, and really send out emails, reminders. It does everything for you. So it's really the adoption of how does this work, and it's a very, very simple process. Uh, and now is more the time than ever to to get on online with us because you don't have to invest this technology. It comes with the package you buy. It is for free. Um, so addressing the, the the CRM need, we already have the soft tool, software tool. Um, the other aspect is we have a net promoter score. It's a basic survey that we have first of all, for the front end uh, users of the site. So we understand what are the users looking in particularly? What are they looking at in terms of uh, property pricing, uh, types of property, category of properties? What are the pain points? Uh, how can we address this within, within the sector? Uh, the other, we also have another MPS score that we run for our agents. Uh, so we also understand what is the agent's experience uh, online with us and how best can we improve that and all of this is done through technology um, using various software tools we have AI intelligence that actually help us with what kind of audience a, we need to redirect um, particular listings to um, all kinds of online marketing uh, channels that we have that provide so all this data and we collect all this business intelligence data and we can actually provide it for both the user as well as for our, our property agents and developers to, to, to actually grow their business and uh, take them to the next level. Okay, okay, wonderful. Um, let me see here. Stephen, you, you have agents that you, that you work with, I presume, or, or people that are in the market um, interacting with customers and end users. 
you're in between the people that may have built a, a, a product and then you have people that maybe are doing the valuations and they are interacting with um, you as the customer. What kind of advice or training or coaching um, tips do you give people on both sides about the adoption of these tools? What, what kind of, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, thank, thank you, Robin. Uh, basically, um, I will not uh, basically talk about uh, the kind of training that we offer, but I will talk about um, what we offer and how we run the business. And uh, all our customers, actually, when they come on board, that is the time that we interact with them and then we are able to, to move along with them. So in terms of business, if you look at real estate business, it is in three parts. The first part is the acquisition part of real estate when you are uh, acquiring the real estate and there are a number of technologies there. The next part is when you're operating the real estate. And again, there are a number of technologies there. And the last part is when you are disposing of real estate. So you are either selling it or you are letting it out to, to a tenant. And again, there are a number of technologies there. So if I look at uh, the first one, uh, this is basically development. Um, in the building construction, of course, uh, there are, of course, the project management uh, software tools, there's a project, uh, you know, uh, sharing, there is document management system, and all that cover uh, that issue of, uh, of uh, development. When it comes to operation, I can just give you um, a clue of what we do in Tyson's. Uh, operation is basically what we call property management and running uh, the property. And for this, uh, we have a particular software which has got uh, a very big uh, capability. The first thing is that uh, it has got a uh, you know, communication portal. So clients can actually log in through their, uh, through their uh, client portal and they're able to interact with us. They're able to see the status of uh, their work. Yeah. And uh, it also deals with issues to do with accounts, uh, e-procurement. It also allows us to capture all the information in a document management system uh, built in the cell. So if you look at the other part, which is now the disposal, and this is actually the larger part where we interact with the majority of, uh, of external agents. Uh, when we have a property coming in, the first thing that we have to do is to inspect the property. Yeah. And of course, uh, inspecting the property, you will need to, uh, to uh, use quite a number of tools. Yeah. For example, you'll need to use uh, Google Maps just to help you identify the property, locate the property. Yeah, There are tools that you can use to take notes when you're in the field. And all these tools, some of them are available. We can talk about Google Keep. It allows you to take notes uh, while you're at the field. And when you come to the office, it's all captured there. The other part is now the listing. And I think this is where uh, Byron uh, plays a major role. And I want to say that uh, Byron is uh, one of our uh, major partners when it comes to uh, to marketing of our properties. Yeah. So when it comes to that particular area of marketing, it starts with the listing. So when you have instructions to list a property, what do you do? Yeah. And the first technology that comes there is definitely your own uh, company website. Yeah. And company website is not adequate. And that is how we reach out to our partners like Byrent and so many others to enable us to cross-list our, uh, our properties. Yeah. And uh, the, way, the way it works, when these properties are cross-listed, the inquiries would actually be delivered to our, uh, to our end in real time. Yeah. By rent would actually send us the particular leads that have been generated in real time. Yeah. And so, uh, so it, it is quite interactive in, in, in the way you, you reach out uh, to the market. Yeah? And of course, um, uh, what we know is that at the moment, the way you look at it, you would even find it very difficult to pass a, a business card. Mm. You know, flyers in the street, you, you know, no one wants flyers anymore on the street. Mm -hmm. yeah? You give out your business yeah. card, nobody wants to carry your business card. And that is now where technology comes in. Mm. Okay. Just uh, to talk about our back office, once we receive um, these particular leads, the most important thing is to account for each and every lead. 
because if you don't account for it, then you are just running part of the business and not the entire business. So we have um, software that allows us to capture the lead and it tracks the lead. The first thing is that it will tell you that the lead has come. After 24 hours, you get a notification just in case you had forgotten to follow up the lead. And it will keep on reminding you about the lead until such time that you have answered that particular uh, lead and given uh, the right information. Other marketing tools that we have used, of course, these are standard marketing tools. Yeah, Facebook, um, social media, we basically used all that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And just to add on to what Stephen was saying, you know, as part of the CRM tool that comes within your package, uh, we, the training is also free, and we can do this training virtually as well because okay. we have the tools to do it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let's see, Stanley, let me ask you a question. Um, you see, we can see these these tools are here. Um, we've heard from Byron Kenya. We've heard, um, we've heard from Tyson in terms of um, how to incorporate them in a business. Tell, can you say a little bit more about, because um, some of these require maybe even governmental policies um, of use because we're getting into, as we increase technology, there's also, um, what do you call it, data protection. That is, um, a lot of people are, are, are um, asking for different controls. So there's some yin and some yang um, inside of this. There's also, we know there's some drone um, issues that may be um, coming on board. Can you maybe tell us about how ready are we in terms of a, um, from a policy or a government or from uh, our, our infrastructure that's ready to do a lot of these things that um, the higher level technology um, incorporation is going to call for? Um, okay. So, as we have heard from what Tyson is doing, it's, just, it's the same with some other companies. We're getting that they are, most of real estate companies have these in-house uh, softwares that are do, that they are incorporating into into their operations. But you see, one thing or one thing with our industry, it's 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 heavily it's it's heavily dependent with the with the government operations. You know, the Ministry of Land, the the, the registry, you know, the planning department, the 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 county offices, you know, but then if you if, if you get to if you get into into this situation where the private sector is ready with 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 a with with a tech product, but then the public sector where the private sector is is dependent is not yet ready, they seem they, it will create a, a certain disconnect where the techno the technologies that we're actually implementing won't actually give us the maximum uh, maximum uh, productivity. And that's why I usually insist that we need to create uh, a data infrastructure, especially with, uh, with, with, with our ministry. Because if I speak, with, if I speak from, uh, from a evaluation standpoint, from once you receive a evaluation instruction, the first thing you're supposed to do is go do a search. And if that process of doing a search is still backward, paper-based, you're going to the registry, you still have a long line to there to, to go obtain a search, you know that that's some kind of hindrance to to us lay down and lay down a, a foundation for technology to thrive, and also agency. You know, in, in as much as we have in listing portals, but then the the agency sector isn't that structured where you can you, you, where it will keep off from keep off people from scamming because we know. There are lots of con cases, mm -hmm. scam cases being happening with the with the with the, with the online or uh, online platform, and that is why I usually say that the the government should come on board, the professional institutions should come on board, especially with agencies. We all know all agents their records are are being listed by the Institute of Surveyors of Kenya, but mm -hmm. what have they done to actually create that infrastructure for technology to thrive within the agency department? So I think the government have has a major big role in this in, in incorporating technology. And if they do not do so, in as much as the private sector starts to implement this, we will be making very baby baby steps 
into mm -hmm. into 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 our digital transformation. And we will, and, and we and, and we want to be seeing the 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 maximum productivity that this technology is actually offering to other to other markets out there. You know. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that we have to set a data infrastructure which should be aided by the by, by, by the public sector. You know, the professional institutions should come on board all the you know our our industry is, is kind of wide where we have architects are uh, the uh, architects are there we have we have the quantity we have the quantity surveyors the construction managers the agencies the surveyors the valuers and these and these sectors all work independent independent of each other but the one thing is that we are all in the same industry so mm -hmm. i believe these guys should just come together and see how we can lay down an infrastructure so that we can implement. Because if you look at the building life cycle, each and one and every professional is included, whether mm -hmm. from the from the market study side, design, construction, to 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 the uh, to the name, disposing of the property that either list either uh, selling or renting, mm -hmm. uh, management. All of these professionals are on board in a building life cycle and this one we should come together so we can lay down the infrastructure because if you don't lay down the infrastructure these innovations can't thrive that mm. as much as the way we want to okay. yeah all right great thank you very much um so lizzie i'm going to bring this back to you as a leader as vibrant kenya being a leader in the sector um and, and maybe you can tell us what are you doing what is vibrant kenya doing to call on the, the uh, policymakers um, for one to do some of the things that Dan that Stanley has just said that are, are you know essential to be done um, right so so some of the things we're doing is like partnering with these various institutions and organization thought leadership really here uh, putting down and 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 actually for example addressing the data protection uh, policy act and within the real estate sector for for example byron kenya has a whole lot of data which uh, we ensure that we do this through all our opt-in campaigns that people actually have given us the mandate to share their personal information with us and this is definitely protected because we are uh, practicing under the act um, we're also working in conjunction with various uh, law firms uh, to see how can this policy be enacted through all the online businesses where we actually extract this information from. Yeah. And what would you need? What do you need from, you know, what do you need from practitioners, your clients? What do you need from us to, to support you and amplify what you're doing? What do you uh, I guess. I guess uh, advocate, advocacy through uh, having uh, webinars like this, uh, talking through your blog articles, you know, teaming together, um, having such events online and actually writing about them. So we sensitize uh, from the top down, bottom up. We, we, we're sensitizing everybody through this industry and uh, bringing all the expertise together and getting government endorsement with, uh, through this as well you know, government support uh, through the various bodies. Okay, okay, great. Um, okay, thank you. Um, let's see here, sorry, he said something. Let me, see, um, let's see, Stephen, I, I, I suppose you are, are you with ISK? Are you a member? Uh, yes, I'm a member of ISK. Okay, wonderful. Um, and I know that there's been, you know, with ISK and real estate agents trying to harmonize um, with each other's role. What do you think about, how do you think the, the way forward is, is in terms of laying that infrastructure that um, Stanley talked about a moment ago in terms of the, the whole cycle? I think that was brilliant. Um, you know, how, how can we streamline um, our interactions and our processes throughout the whole cycle? Um, what, what, do you, what do you see as a way forward or what are your thoughts about that? Okay, um, I, I will not talk basically as a, uh, as a representative of, I, of ISK, yes. but uh, as a member of ISK. Yes. So uh, as ISK, there, there is so much that uh, can actually be done, there is so much that has already been done. Yeah? In terms of communication between uh, members of ISK, I can say that the communication is perfect. Yeah? 
when it comes to representation um, of members to uh, to local uh, you know decision making bodies that is already done and isk is doing a good job when it comes to lobbying for uh, for issues when they come up particularly legislation again isk is is doing that so maybe the the, the other part that isk can uh, can do and uh, they can do this in a better way is to enable a platform that would allow the agents to interact when it comes to business so if i have a property that i am letting then every member of isk should be able to see that particular property yeah? and with that it makes it very easy for me because i i have uh, the landlord and any other member could be having uh, the tenant and then in the process of uh, uh, sharing information and also sharing in terms of uh, you know uh, any kind of commission that comes uh, comes up there it allows all the parties to play a role in this yeah. mm -hmm. that will certainly shorten the time that is taken to sell a property because as soon as i shoot uh, a property into the uh, into the system all of a sudden i have in excess of 1000 uh, agents who are also working for me if somebody sends something out more than 1000 agents have access to that so technically it shortens the period that we take when we are disposing of a property and when we are letting of a property that is the part that isk now may need to focus on in order to bring the members closer in order to make transactions move very fast yeah and um basically uh, it it will enhance um the business that the members are undertaking and also the welfare of the members and that can only be done through technology okay all right great thank you let me uh, let me ask um if, uh, a last round of questions if you will um let's see here stanley somebody is asking linda in our chat is asking I think we've mentioned some free technologies. Do you have any, they're asking, do you have any off the top of your head, any, you know, um, any video, VR, you know, any tools or technologies that you um, think are out there that, that, that people off the top of your head? So how do we use VR? Are there tools for that? Are they doing, um, she didn't say that specifically, but she's, you know, I think Stanley said they're, I'm sorry, um, Stephen said there was some free technologies in addition to paid ones. Uh, and not a CRM, of course, we want people to, get, to take up uh, Byron Kenya on the CRM, but are there other technologies that are out there that people can easily find and use? Yeah, they are. But then when you talk about free technology, free tech, I don't think it's there. Uh, <laughs> all of them come at a cost. <laughs> because, uh -huh. uh, yeah, this tech, it's not something that has been there, it's something new. So I don't think there are that are free. But okay. I know, yeah, I know some companies who are doing uh, virtual tours. I think it's a yes. company called 360 Tours, from what wrong. We have mm -hmm. Matterport, which, which is also offering that uh, same service. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also if you if you're dealing with uh, real estate research, we have Microsoft BI that can help you know, integrate the whole data that you have that you can uh, be able to optimize the, the the information that you have so that you can be able to give informed decisions. Yeah, so these technologies are there, but they come at a cost, you know. Okay. So the only thing is just you have to identify which technology actually suits uh, what you what you actually do. And that's where, like, uh, my brother Stephen was saying that we lack uh, the skills gap, the, the qualified uh, personnel, people who actually know people who actually know the tech side and the real estate side that's mm. what we like yeah. because if you had people who 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 knew both fields very well this transformation would just be as smooth as possible mm. yeah okay great let me um lizzie um as somebody else um also mentioned eva in our chat she also um picks up on uh, what stanley said a moment ago that um that technology, people are used to technology. Um, that's that's not new, I think. But in our sector, there is a there is a unique 
um, challenge that may cause some hesitancy to, as a on the on the buyer side, um, to fully onboard um, the use of technology, um, reducing the face, being able to see people face to face for a transaction, and that is the scams. That is the the scam that people are dealing with. That's going to be that's that's being interpreted as a big hindrance. Um, for us to fully move into that. I don't know if you have some, don't want to hear any horror stories. I bet we all have uh, some <laughs> to share. But what do yeah. you see as, as how do we curb this? Or how do we, as, on the buyer side, how do we enhance the confidence on the, on the, on the buyer side that um, there's some credibility or validity in, in the use of this technologies? Yeah. So on Byron Kenya, we we do have um, we do vet all our listings. Uh, we do have a particular department that actually goes through the moderation. Um, look, this is uh, we try to get a hundred percent right. You will always find somebody that will have uh, a listing online looks perfectly okay. But what happens after? Uh, the lead has contacted the, the agent uh, and go, goes behind the scenes through the transactional side is what we can't control because we're not a transactional company. But we do try to vet the leads. We do try to vet everything, uh, including all the listings that are posted and the agents that post with us. We do put out um, a buyer's beware uh, list of do's and don'ts uh, on our website that can be found on our website, uh, how to curb on the fraud. And uh, if there's any fraud at all, we blacklist these numbers as well. Um, but unfortunately, we can't really take care of the transactional side of things because we're not actually there. But never ever pay someone in advance until you've either physically seen the property for yourself and validated the paperwork. Okay, so that's so that's you know so that's an advice to the buyers, which um, yeah. but we're this is probably mostly the the people that are trying to connect to the buyers. So what would you tell me as an agent, um, Tyson and as or, or Stephen, to have them present themselves in a yes. way that gives more confidence? So maybe I can ask Stephen to say that you know um, what what do you know, what do I do in the virtual world um, that presents myself as confident, as somebody that's credible? What do what does what do what does a business person in this sector do? Uh, thank you, Robin. Um, uh, professionals are actually registered uh, experts. So the first place to check whether somebody is authentic or not is to go to the website that is hosted by the professional uh, organization. All registered estate agents are registered with the estate agents registration board. Mm -hmm. So by simply logging into the estate agents registration board, you'll be able to see the names of all the registered estate agents. So if somebody is not registered there, the first thing that you would ask the person, you know, is uh, to tell you his uh, credentials. What is the registration number? Mm. So if the registration number is not there, that tells you that that person is not a registered uh, estate agent and is not qualified to provide the service. All these qualifications are actually mirrored in all our websites. In, you know, all the professional companies, they mirror this in their website. When it comes to valuation exercise, again, valuers are registered by the valuers registration board. Mm. So if somebody's name is not there, then again, that person is not qualified uh, to undertake uh, such kind of a service. And I believe all the professionals are registered uh, the same way. So the way to provide information about your authenticity is just to link what you're saying, your online presence, and your online presence must also be validated by registration bodies. There is not much that you can do to convince somebody that you are not uh, fake but it is the person himself to verify after you've tried your best to explain and to uh, and to bring basically your your operations and the way you conduct your business. So after doing that, that is the best that you can do. But then you can yeah. guide that particular agent 
to the professional websites. Yeah? And if they are able to find your name there, it actually just increases the level of confidence. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, just to add on, uh, Robin, just to, to add on to what Stephen's saying, also at Buy Rent Kenya for the agents that are posting with us, it's now mandatory to provide uh, your KRA PIN number. And if you have a certificate of uh, incorporation for your company details, uh, so that you can list and everything is verified on, on, on the site. Not sure if we've lost Robin. <laughs> and, and sorry about that. This is again technology is. Even in our chats, we're seeing several participants saying power outages are affecting their being their being with us, and so I'm I'm feeling it also. Okay, so thank you, Lizzie. I did I did hear the um, the finishing of your your statement. Thank you. Cool. So let me let me just do a final um, a final st statement, if you will. So in that in the second poll that we had, and and we're going to be closing here in um, less than eight minutes. Twenty five percent of that um, one of their major challenges was incorporating building technologies uh, or technology into their business. And then 75% said that um, they are having challenges or would need more expertise, um, development, training, knowledge in um, increasing leads and converting to sales. So that's what it's, it sounds like um, what our respondents are. We are up to almost 90, 90 people, again, still participating with us. And so I want to just pick up on Stanley's um, comment and what he said here um, earlier, is that PropTech is exactly what the two words uh, implies that it is. And it requires that there's a, a deep knowledge in the property sector first, if you will, there's a deep knowledge in the property sector first, and then you take every step of that process, every step of that real estate process, and then seek out tools, um, methods that utilizes technology to carry out that that um, to carry out that 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 delivery or that process in the real estate sector, or the real estate, your real estate business. And I just want to point out in our book, the Building in Kenya book, it is. So it is a book that's a step-by-step -step guide on the real estate business or the building um, development process. And you want to take that step-by-step -step and translate it, just as Stanley said, into technology. So we make that available. So if, it, if it's anyone, your clients, or your customers who want to really understand that process, we invite them to get that process, the book also, so that they become knowledgeable in that and, and then translate that knowledge into a techno technological um, delivery method. And so with our parting shot and our last um, comment, I started at the beginning and with asking, and this is gonna take some, um, taking off your business hat to respond to this question, everybody. I asked you, who do you think, or where do you think the challenge really lies in the incorporation of, of technology? I really, I really, so this is going to take off, this is, this is not going to be the politically correct comment. I really want you to look at what, do you, in your experience, where do you see the real challenges lying? And what do people need to overcome to step into this new future now? We don't have time to wait. The, 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 the plane is boarded. We are in this new future now. So let me just go around the room. 
Um, I'm going to start with Stanley because he's out there and he's been doing this and he's been proselytizing this for a long time. Um, Stanley, what do you see the, as a real challenge and, you know, what's it going to take um, for us to, to really take off? Uh, okay. Just one minute, please, if you don't mind. One, oh, mm -hmm. one minute. So I'll make it short. Yeah, one and a half. One, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we, <laughs> we have a lot of challenges, but I think the one major one, the one major one that that trumps all of these challenges is is the human aspect. You know, in as much as we, in as much as we'll say that the market the market isn't ready, the market is opaque. There is not there is not much of um, a data sharing uh, ecosystem. But then, but then, it I think it's us who, who are supposed to drive the market. So this whole thing. With all these uh, challenges, it's, I think the only the major problem is just us. If we overcome and 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 we decide like, like I think this is now the right time for for me to reinvent myself as a professional to now become tech savvy. I think if each one and every stakeholder involved has that mindset, I think we'll push this whole incorporation forward. In as much as we're talking about the different uh, challenges, but it it all starts with you and I. If we all change our mindset, if we're all uh, driven into this whole uh, transformation, this whole thing will just be moving smoothly. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Great, thank you very much. Lizzie? Um, yes, I agree with uh, Stephen. Uh, we are definitely a people-oriented business. So I think losing that personal touch and person-to-person -person is what is something that we all have to get through. Um, technology can actually bring us together. Uh, you see families meeting online uh, nowadays, uh, there's more WhatsApp, we're more, we're more in it together. So if you're not on Byron Kenya uh, to showcase your properties, then you're missing out uh, because that's one way of growing your brand and reaching out to potential uh, leads from the audiences that we attract onto the site. Um, and you know, we're here for you. Uh, we were here for you before COVID. We're going to be here for you during COVID, and we're definitely here to stay after COVID. So uh, reach out to us at byronkenya.com. Okay, great. Thank you. And Stephen. Uh, thank you, Robin. What I can say about uh, uh, adoption of technology, the most important thing is that you start from where you are. Already we have so many uh, communication tools that are available. There is Facebook, there is, um, you know, uh, we have Google. Yeah. You have all that technology that is available. Some of us are in LinkedIn, some of us, you know, we, we do all manner of things. All these technologies are there and available. We have emails, WhatsApp has come up and now it's interrupting the way we, you know, uh, the, the, the time uh, that is expected for us to respond to emails. Yeah. You know, you, you don't have the luxury of waiting until you go back to the office. You just start from where you are. As you upgrade your business, then you can incorporate technologies that now you will need to pay for. Yeah, I'm not very sure whether buy rent provides uh, uh, what I would call a free version, yeah. but there are so many other technologies that would start with a free version, so many other CRMs, then you can upgrade, upgrade it to, uh, to, to another platform. Okay. And that is what we do in Tyson's, because we didn't just start from, uh, you know, um, from one big technology. We started small, yeah, mm -hmm. and we have just been upgrading it from one technology to another, just small, small, small. Then at the end, you consolidate everything. Okay, wonderful. Great, great feedback. Great, great um, interventions from everybody on the panel. So I just, I want to thank everyone, everyone for being here. Lizzie, thank you very much. Stanley and thank Stephen. You. Thank you so much for being here and, and providing your, your insight and your input on uh, incorporating technology in your real estate business and moving your building business online. I want to thank all of you that have joined us today. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you, um, you're you taking away something that you can use today to say, I'm going to jump in on this. And Stephen said something very important. Just start small. Smart with, start with a small incorporation and it will build on and build on and build on. Um, on behalf of my co-author, Emma Miloyo, and myself of Building in Kenya, 
and Byron Pena, we thank you all for tuning in for the first um, webinar. We invite you to tune in to the next one, which will be on the 5th of June. And there we will actually be addressing that question, Linda, and um, how do you translate your business and translate sales and using technology? So tune in to our next webinar on June the 5th. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. All right. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye, everybody.